Blog Talk Radio. Young exclusive. Man, I can't wait to go back to school. I know, right? Me too. School School is fun. fun.
Um, the thing I would say is uh, if you got an album, have one of your singles, and try to um, give one of your singles free to help promote for your album, you know, like a digital download or whatever, or, um, or give out singles. If you're going to open mic night, you know, you cast some of your singles with you that's from off the album. You know what I'm saying? And then you can tell them how to get your album if they want to buy your album. You know, like if you got it on iTunes, Amazon, or, or any of them um, digital distribution uh, sites that's online. Also, you can uh, network. You can go to the music seminar. Now, because your song is selling, don't mean that you don't have no product to sell. But that will make you have to go to the music seminar. So you go to a music seminar to fit your style of music. Whatever music that you do. And um, another thing you can do is while you're waiting for your sales and your music, just do like Lil Wayne, put out a mixtape. You know what I'm saying? Um, keep keep coming out with mixtapes. That help out too. That help out with a buzz. That help out a promotion. And I haven't heard of a DJ right now turned down on mixtape when somebody give it to him. And you got to have a good relationship with the DJs. You know, the DJs in the club. And um, another thing you um, you want to also try to set up an interview with your local radio station. You know, since you're pushing it out and you start from the bottom before you get to the top. So you be local. you local, you go to a local radio station in your area. And then you tell them what plans you're trying to do. Get your little interview on the radio. Um, they play your song. Then you be able to tell them where to get it in on iTunes or Amazon and everything. And um, you can be able to tell the program um, director how many hits you done got on the song. Be able to tell them uh, you got your music video playing on YouTube and you got a lot of views. Um you got to come with um, your body. You let them know um, your goals or you doing with your music and stuff. So there is not no end to it just because you look online. You say, oh, man, I ain't getting no record sale. No, it don't stop there. You know what I'm saying? As long as you keep pushing, somebody's going to pay attention. Somebody's going to be knocking on the door. Somebody's going to give you a contract um, dealing with your music. That's why I said you don't never give up. If you talk to some of the artists that's now that, that made it, some of them say they had to start from scratch. And that's how you got to do You got to start from scratch. It's almost like uh, you're building a house. You got to get your foundation um, together first. Then you start building on top of it. So if, if you got social network sites, got to start building them. You know what I'm saying? Then you got to start pushing, you know, so you can be heard. If you have to give out flyers or something, you know what I'm saying? And um, um, sometimes if you can't even do a show, just be at one of the, um, the shows that one of them local artists is doing. And while you're there, you can be able to introduce yourself are you there? You got your little music, what you do, and everything. So it don't stop there. You got you got to push it, push it, push it, push it. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, if you might sit and talk to Lil Wayne, he, he might tell you he, they didn't get no sleep because they were pushing, 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 pushing that music till you know it got out there. In a large market, and larger audience, and larger sales, and larger shows. That's how I do. Um, we're going to play this song, um, A Four Quarter Color Blind. But if you, if any female artists is out there, if y'all got some good music, just send it to me to my email, uh, djblak2 at the gmail dot com and send an MP3 format, you know, because I'm so love to the female, your artist, and you send me 
your music and everything. I'm going to play a um, full chord from Colorblind. And before I do that, I'd like to get shout out to Pain187. I got your email. I hit you up. You can hit me back. Uh, you're on Instagram. You know what I'm saying? It's sounding like a light bulb. <laughs> so um, I'm doing some things with that. But um, Pain187 supposed to be supposed to be working on a um, music video. And uh, when he finishes, he's supposed to uh, make it sure that I know so I can be a good shout out, let y'all know when he's coming on YouTube. And I'm getting ready to do my music video for the hip hop baddie. I'm trying to get all that stuff straight. I was on, you know, got to do all this planning. And I, uh, I hope to get that um, music video out within 60 days. You know, got you know a lot of work in this. If you're trying to maintain yourself in this music thing. Even when I'm doing my radio show. Well, right now, um, after I come back from off this um, this song right here, talk a little bit about the Summer case. Now, if you want to um, be able to call in, listen, call on uh, 646-915-8297. All I'd like to get thanks to all my fans supporters because I had about 5,000 listeners last week. You know, this Trayvon Martin thing is, is done got ridiculous, and I need to find the man not guilty. So I'm getting ready. i um, give myself a little rest. Play this full quarter by um, Colorblind. Falling with no time out. No time out. All day, we gon' show you what that grind about. Yes, sir. 28 7, extra hours on the clock. I'm either in the kitchen cooking or I'm on the block. Hit, hit, hit my line, I ain't hard to find. Ask around, we got the largest dime. Leave things shake, shake like they traumatized. And they gon' stand and sing the foul like a marching line. We go hard like it's for the mall. Stay in your lane, gotta know your part Fifth on my waist, I'll hold your car Dirty in the clip, don't get to a part Blood, sweat, and tears like we in the fourth quarter Get it for the low, cause we ignore the border We got it on lock, like it's a quarter It's only 12 o'clock, and I'm on my fourth quarter Welcome to the city of snow, we get clock. Trap stars and we trap hard in the backyard. R- running numbers, yeah, homie, like the track star. Stairs watching, won't let indict me on the crack charge. And they assumptions is I got a lot of yay. They ain't seen it yet, huh? So they ain't got no case. Meanwhile, same time, same place. See, I'm back at the top, a nigga gotta get paid. Pushing weight. From state to state And uh Getting paid Eating off this money Nigga call it Paper plate We on the paper route So we uh Paper chase Pay paper chase We patrol the block With the AK We control the block Nigga all day If these soldiers On the block Nigga always And they stay strapped So you know They gon' spray We all Like it's the fourth
Yeah, this is uh, Internet Radio host, DJ Black, uh, radio show. I'm uh, doing my radio show straight out of Gaffney, South Carolina. I'd like to give out a shout out to all the people in the Carolinas and all on the East Coast and everything. And um, my topic is um, about sentiment. You know, um, do you feel that... Um, the Simmerman case, um, since he done got found new, uh, not guilty, so he still be a neighborhood crime watch captain. Now, my opinion on that, no, because uh, I feel that uh, he was negligent and reckless in um, what he had did, um, killing an innocent uh, person by he's speculating or assuming and his uh, assumption can cause people lives like he did Tray- Trayvon Martin and that don't mean that he might not repeat that action in the future and um, it's kind of messed up I don't find him not guilty he still can carry a gun and um, now the president uh, uh, commented on the verdict I think the president of the United States did a good job because he really wasn't on Zimmerman's side and he really wasn't on Trayvon Martin's side. He was trying to let you know that there's still some rusty stuff going on with the justice system dealing with statutes and stuff and how they perceive or, 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 or dealing with the elements of the offense or how they fix it up that um, – I a person be able to um, have loopholes and and they're playing word games and these word games uh, um, mess up the case and makes it hard for a jury, you know, to be able to make the right judgment because the jury said they only had one-sided issue and and they, and they said they was um, had to go with the just a Justified um, issue because they narrowed everything down. And see, for real, an African American um, male go or uh, female um, go to court. They don't narrow nothing down. They put all the counts on there that they can give you. And it's almost like they throw the book at you. You know, you might be going to court. You might, you might be facing four, five, six, seven, or eight, nine counts. But they didn't do that with him. He supposed to be having all kind of counts, even the gun count and all that stuff. But the feds don't play. The feds gonna put all the counts on there, which you supposed to get, and that, that make it so that you be able to plead out. And uh, in some of the case, um, I don't know why, but you know he, his lawyer could have did a plea agreement, um, you know, to manslaughter. Well, and the man already said he was guilty. For shooting him, and uh, you know, I feel like he should be accountable because, to me, it's still a homicide because he should kill somebody that's unknown that really was trying to make it home. So, um, the president did a good job making the comment on. And I don't care what none with that news media say. He had to, had to explain it in a term that. Um, that everybody knows exactly where he's coming from. You know, they, I guess they want him to be a white president, but he's not. You know, um, he got to be able to weigh both sides because he mixed. And he can't get on the white people's side. He can't get on black people's side. But at least he can sit there and reason not use common sense and know that something's wrong. You know, anybody knows something's wrong. And um, and that's why they got to review everything. Tell them all these statues, all these drug laws, uh, how they're treating the people on parole and super, um, supervision and probation and everything when they get released through the street, why they make it hard for them to get jobs, get houses, why they can't get Section 8, why they can't get food stamps, uh, all kind of stuff they they doing. They're trying to uh, limit, it, you know, Limit you and everything. So, the president doing right thing. He got to look through all of that. 
know what I'm saying? Because if a person did some time in prison, he get out on the street. He's still supposed to have the same opportunity as everybody else on the street because now he's trying to get himself together and get back in the community. And all the community resources, he's supposed to be able to get to them resources. There shouldn't be no limitations or any roadblocks uh, to block him from, from attaining that. And um, another thing I'm bringing up, uh, if anybody um, with the Zimmerman, you know, um, in his heart, he feels like he's not guilty. He feels like he's justified because he must have sit there and studied that statute and know the elements of offense. So when he did come into competition with somebody that's other than his color, he he feel like if he or shoot him, he can get away with it because he know the statute. You know what I'm saying? He he, he protected by the elements of offense because he studied it. Because if he didn't, then he wouldn't have been hollering, uh, talking about staying your law on ground and and um, saying um, um, he hit me in my nose. He did all of this. This, this was the, um, I couldn't get away and all this other stuff. Now, that's messed up for a grown man um, on nationwide TV saying a 17-year-old dude beat him up. Now, that's embarrassing. You know what I'm saying? Man, talking about he the one on the phone doing all the crying and hollering and, and, and hollering for help. He a grown man, and, and he, he saying he let a seventeen year old beat him up. He shouldn't have been taking no martial arts. He shouldn't be no training. He should be no watchman or uh, neighborhood watchman captain because he already let a seventeen year old beat him up. That's what he telling the, everybody that was listening to it um, on TV and radio and all that stuff. That he telling the whole world a seventeen year old beat me up. And the voice you heard on on the radio was me hollering, screaming for help, like a coward. <laughs> screaming for help like a coward. Um, yeah, so um, I I feel that like he was he guilty of something. You know what I'm saying? The prosecutor prosecutor couldn't pinpoint it. You know what I'm saying? What he guilty of? He guilty of something. You know what I'm saying? You no, know, um, he can go ahead on his life. But Tray, Trayvon Martin can't, because he ended his life at 17. You know, you know, you know. His parents, when they had him, for him to live his life to the fullest. You know what I'm saying? He wanted to go to college. He had an opportunity to go to college, wherever. But <laughs> we had somebody like Simmerman, um holding court on the street, and I think that justified. Um, then your law thing should be reviewed because um, due process ain't ain't um, can't play a part when um, he never got a chance to go in front of the judge, or he never got a chance to see was he gonna be charged with anything. Because right now, if they did hold him and the police did get there and he didn't kill him, he would have to let him go because he lived in a neighborhood. So it wasn't like that he was committing a felony or misdemeanor coming from 7-Eleven going home. So, you know, that's why the President of the United States and Eric Holden, I'm looking at it because that's kind of strange that he get picked out a whole bunch. You know what I'm saying? You know, that he uh, like he targeted him. He had to jump out of the truck and, and, and follow him, stuff like that. So, you know. I leave I leave that all up to the president for right now, and let him do his job. Is any criminal civil rights being violated and all that other stuff? You know, the thing I want I'll be trying to do is make sure I don't get my civil rights violated. And if if anybody out there is listening and getting their civil rights violated, you write your letter to the president. His president uh, at White House, um, period, GOV, if your civil rights been violated. 
to write your letter up there to let him know so he can put all that together. So if if they win the criminal um, civil case thing, you probably you be able to get some relief too. You know what I'm saying? If they had locked you up illegally, as long as you got your letter up there and the attorneys and them are documented and everything, and you have opportunity to have your case heard right along with um, the Trayvon Martin case, if you feel like um, it was, um, their rights was violated. And um, if you didn't hear what I had said about the email um, thing, you can um, go online and uh, hit the White House, you know, Google White House. And, um, you know, the, when you do the email, just put the word president and at White, White House and period GOV. And uh, the letters go straight to President Obama. And he needs many letters that, that he came. So he, he'll he know that um, what he's working with. You know how many people are um, going to stand up and uh, let him know that uh, the rights was violated. If you even a female, that your rights was violated. Um, I'm getting ready to um, play this other song. Um, uh, um, Pain 187, and um, I'm going to this. Yeah. 